guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. I thought that this week I would talk to you guys a little bit about how to choose the appropriate fish food for your fish. Now there are hundreds of products on the market, many of which are just fine, so I am not going to recommend specific brands. I'm not endorsed by anyone and I don't specifically endorse any brand. However, I would like to teach you how to look at the labels to make a better decision for your fish. There's a couple of reasons why choosing the correct fish food is really important. First of all, it's important for your fish's health. You want it to be something that they can easily digest, that promotes good health and longevity in our fish. Feeding an inexpensive and poor quality diet can lead to premature organ failure, susceptibility to disease, and a host of problems. It can also make your tank really dirty. Things that aren't digestible just get pooped out immediately, clogging up your filters, falling into the substrate, and generally causing a mess. It'll increase your nitrates, increase your phosphates, and make your tank more prone to algae and issues. So I've gathered together a few commercially available foods so we could take a look at the labels and talk more about how to choose a food. There's three main types of food that you can feed. One is dried foods. This is your pellets, your flakes, uh, freeze-dried foods, then there's live foods, and then there's frozen foods. And they each have their own pluses and minuses, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Most people start with dried foods, your flakes your, and your pellets, and this is because they're inexpensive, they're easy to feed, they keep for a long time, you can leave them in your fish room, and the marketing campaign for them is very, very strong. Now, it's really easy to fall into the trap of picking a food based on the label, the words that they use, but you really have to take a close look at the ingredients list because the vast majority of the time what they're marketing is not actually what's in the food. For instance, the vast majority of algae wafers have very little to no algae in them at all. In fact, they're predominantly fish meal. So if you buy a pellet to feed a specific type of feeding behavior, you want to make sure that that nutritional content is there within the pellet. There's a couple different strategies that the vast majority of fish follow for feeding in an aquarium. That you have your herbivores, which are the ones that predominantly eat algae or the things stuck in algae. You have your piscivore or carnivore, which are the ones that eat other fish or the flesh of fish. And then you have your omnivores, which are the sort of fish that will eat anything, opportunistic feeders. It's important to understand the natural diet of your fish when choosing your fish food. Not that they won't eat whatever you offer them, but for their longevity and vitality, it's important to offer a diet that at least sort of mimics what they would find in the wild. Now, behavior can be a good indicator of what they need to eat in the aquarium. Are they out and about all the time? Are they visible in the open water? Those are generally your predators, your omnivores, your carnivores. Are they sitting on your hardscape, grazing constantly? Those are generally your herbivores. So when choosing your foods, you want to take that into consideration. Now, I think the biggest mistake that people make when feeding or choosing a food is that they feed way too much. You need to remember that the vast majority of dried, your pelleted and your flake foods are five times as nutritionally dense as um, a whole food, like a frozen food or a live food. This means they pack in tons and tons of nutrients, fillers, and everything so that you need to feed less of them because it produces a lot more waste. So when choosing a dried food, there's a few things that I look for and a few things that I avoid. I try and avoid any mammalian protein, any beef, chicken, things like that. Fish just don't eat them. I also try and find a food that has minimal amounts of terrestrial grains, especially soy. Now, it's really, really common in fish food for different terrestrial grains to be used as a binder, but some are better than others. I tend to gravitate towards foods that have pea protein or things like that as their filler over, thing, over foods that use wheat. So a good example of that is this food. This is one that I feed all the time. When I look at the ingredient list, it says spirulina algae, algae meal, which means chlorella, krill meal, pea protein isolates, and squid meal. Those are the first main ingredients. Those are, for the most part, digestible, usable, quality ingredients. 
it's not going to cause a ton of waste in my water and it's not going to cause a ton of clouding. When I look at this one, this one is marketed as a bottom feeder pellet, um, a shrimp pellet. The first ingredient is wheat flour. Now I have a feeling if I were to put this food into a glass of water and let it sit for the recommended three to five minute feeding time, the water would be extremely cloudy and that would mean that this would be clogging up my filters as well as settling into the substrate and making my fish poop a whole lot more for less nutritional return. Now the second ingredient is shrimp meal and that is very good. It's not a generic fish meal. This is a freeze-dried food, which I particularly like, and I use this um, in place of flakes for the most part. This is whole jumbo krill, and the only ingredient is freeze-dried krill, and that is really great. Now, they've removed all of the water content, so it is the protein is up over 50%, but I find it to be a really good alternative to feeding a flake or pellet that is full of preservatives and terrestrial grains. Now with this, because I deal with small fish, I simply take a whole shrimp and crush it up in my fingers to make a coarse powder to feed my fish. Because it's so stinky, the fish go crazy for it. And I don't feed this all the time. Again, variety is the spice of life. I don't feed my family the same food every day and I don't feed my fish food the same food every day. This is a readily available mass-produced brand that is pretty popular in the hobby and found at every pet store. And this is one that I would absolutely avoid at all costs feeding to my fish. In fact, it's never been opened. I get a lot of free samples at the conventions I go to and I should just throw this one away. The first ingredient is fish meal, generic fish meal. This is just ground up stuff that came from a fish. It's not the whole fish. Wheat germ, wheat gluten, yeast, wheat flour, wheat starch, potato, soybean, corn, dehulled soybean, and then a whole bunch of different preservatives. That means that this complete cichlid diet that's being sold for our fish has, while the main ingredient is fish meal, it's like junky fish meal, and the rest of it is stuff that they can't digest. That means if I were to feed this in my aquarium, my fish would be getting sort of like a fast food diet. It'd be like eating potato chips or fast food all the time. There's not a whole lot of nutrition in this diet and that would produce a whole lot of waste. You have to remember, you know, you can tell if your fish are getting enough to eat the same way you can tell if a person is. What is their body condition like and how is their activity level? If they're active, if their bellies are round, you know that they're getting enough to eat. Um, I also like to feed a lot of frozen foods and the thing to remember about frozen foods is that they are about 70% water. But for the most part, there's a few vitamins added and they're just whatever you're feeding, be it cyclops, worms, mysis, whatever. You can chop those to make them appropriate sizes for smaller fish or you can just defrost them and feed them to the tank. They have a more natural texture and they have no fillers so they create less of a mess of your aquarium. Because they're not as nutritionally dense from having all the things added into them, you may need to feed that more frequently. In fact, in my fish room when I feed tanks, I prefer to feed small, frequent meals a couple times a day rather than one large feeding. This ensures that fish on all levels of the tank can, can get food, and it also means that I, if there's uneaten food, I can remove it before I have water quality issues. I do use a lot of gelatinized foods as well, which is, this is a gelatinized food. And I do that simply because I can mimic the feeding behavior for my fish a little bit better. And I'll do um, a video on this on its own at some point. I mix the powder with boiling water and then apply it to various surfaces like driftwood or tiles so that I can put it in the area of the tank that I want it so that fish of all levels can eat it or so that my grazers can graze over a prolonged period rather than having to binge during feeding time. You also need to consider how your dried food behaves in your aquarium. Does it float? Does it sink? Is it slow sinking? And choose according to that. I tend to go with slow sinking foods because it means the fish at the surface can eat it, the fish in the midwater can eat it, and the fish at the bottom will get some. Again, it's important to feed a varied diet. Look at your label. Pick a food that has whole fish ingredients where it names the type of fish that is the meal 
try and avoid a heavy concentration of any terrestrial grains, especially soybean and wheat. And try and pick a diet that suits your fish's needs based on their diet in the wild. It's not hard to figure out through Google what a fish would eat in the wild. Feeding a varied diet of high quality food can really increase the longevity of your fish and the overall health of your entire aquarium. Hope that helps. As always, thank you guys for the continued donations and support. Make sure you don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my Tuesday tips and Sunday species spotlights. Also, don't forget to stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.